Did you know there's a vehicle that can basically climb mountains in DMZ? Or how about the fact that you can instantly refuel vehicles and repair them when you're not even anywhere close to a gas station? Or maybe you don't want to do an eliminate enemy squad contract, but you still want to find enemy players on the map easily. Listen, we've all been there. I like to hunt people down as well. So in this video, I'll be giving you 30 plus no-nonsense tips and tricks to make you an absolute expert in the DMZ. Here's a quick reminder for you to subscribe. Let's jump into tip number one. When you steal enemy dog tags, it makes you appear on the map of the enemy team that you stole them from. But you can actually bluff your position by dropping the dog tags onto the floor after you pick them up. The enemy team will still be notified that you're in the area where the dog tags are dropped, but you could be anywhere else. An overwatch position, maybe a flank angle, something to take them down from behind. Number two, if you've been struggling to keep enough armor plates in the game, the enemy AI has just been ripping you to shreds, make sure you're getting headshots on the enemies. And this is especially effective if you're able to one-hit kill them. Doing so will mean that they're more likely to drop armor because you haven't broken their armor in order to kill them. Number three, this one's a two-parter, really. So it's pretty common knowledge that if you've got a cooldown timer on your insurance weapon, you can reduce the timer by exfilling, holding loads of cash. And a pro tip for you here is if you've got valuable items, not cash, but things like gold bars or fuel rods, those are automatically controlled converted to cash the second you leave on that exfil chopper. So you don't need to spend some time running to a buy station to sell your stuff and then exfilling because the game will do the conversion for you and that will still reduce your timer. Number four, this is why I said it's a two-parter. You can also reduce your cooldown timer mid-game if you don't think you're going to survive your exfil or you just want to make sure you lock in your gains by going to one of these white dumpsters around the map. They're called dead drop locations and if you put cash into the dumpster, you don't need to exfil but it will still reduce your insurance weapon cooldown timer. Number five, if you're hunting enemy players and you pop an advanced UAV near to your location, you're going to see loads of red dots and those could be AI or they could be enemy players. However, if you pull up your map and you look a little further away, you'll notice that there's a lot fewer red dots and that's because those are all enemy players. None of those ones that are really far away from you on the map are AI because it would just be too much for the game to process in that moment trying to show all the AI on the map at one time. So instead, it only shows players. And especially if you see one of those red dots on its own or something, you should go hunt them down. Number six, the spotter scope goes in your tactical grenade slot and it is fantastic for marking enemies and keeping track of them as they move around. And I'm not just talking about AI. This works phenomenally on players as well. If you're trying to coordinate with your team, we all know that the ping system in this game is a bit weak right now. It needs improvement. But by using your spotter scope, you can quickly pull it up, tag them with a ping, and then your whole team will be able to follow exactly where they are because they'll have been marked. Number seven, a really smart idea if you're partying up with friends and jumping into DMZ is to have your friends build your ideal weapon for you in their insured slot and then you do the same for them and when you jump into the game, swap weapons. This way, you'll extract with the gun that you wanted but it will be contraband instead of insured and vice versa. And so you can just continuously stack up extra copies of your insurance weapon in your stash and then if your insurance weapon's on cooldown, down, it doesn't matter. You've got five clones of that weapon ready to be used. Number eight, it's a good idea to get into a habit of making a mental note of where on the map you've spawned in. The reason for that is obviously there are other players spawning in too. And in certain areas, if all the players in that kind of zone just all run forwards to start looting, they're going to end up in very close proximity. So an example of this is the quarry area. When you spawn near the quarry, you want to keep in mind the fact that there are a lot of other spawns near there that all kind of congregate in that area. So start keeping a mental note of where you spawn so that you can predict where other squads will be spawned in your games. Number nine. I'm sure you're aware there are different factions which each have their own sets of missions that you can do in order to work towards unlocking extra insured weapon slots. However, you might not have noticed that you can actually skip one mission from each tier while you're trying to unlock the next one up. So let's say you're on tier three of White Lotus and you just can't clear your strongholds fast enough to get that mission completed. You could choose to just not do that mission and do all the other missions in the tier instead and you'll still unlock tier four. Now, what a lot of people don't know 
know is that you can still show the previous tier missions, including the ones that you didn't do. So if you do skip one, you can still go back and finish it off, even though by default, without doing that little toggle, you won't even be able to see those missions, but they are still available to you. So go get that XP. Number 10. In the flooded city, there is a secret room that contains loads of really good loot and a golden deagle. Now, normally you would need a key for hotel room 302 in order to get in there. And there's even a mission for you to get into that room and loot the stuff that's inside. However, both for the mission and just for general gameplay, you don't actually need the key. There is an opening in the roof that will allow you to drop in. And once you're inside, you can open the deadbolt from the inside out without ever having having picked the key up. There's always a bunch of high value items in there. You'll get your gold bars, your bags of money, and obviously your gold deagle. But don't just stop there. You can also loot the room next door, and that usually has pretty good loot in it as well. Number 11, staying on the topic of the half-submerged city, if you get downed in the water in that area, be very careful not to crawl all the way into the water because you can still suffocate while you're downed. And that'll mean that your teammates might think that they've got more time to revive you, but then you suddenly perish halfway through your down timer and they're probably not going to be very happy with that. So keep that in mind. Number 12, looting the train is a really good idea, especially if you spawn in in an area of the map where the train passes you very early on. It's full of good loot. There's a bunch of orange crates. There's a bunch of regular supply crates. And there's also an ammo refill box so you can get fully replenished if you've been fighting and need a quick getaway and a reset. Number 13, we've got a train double whammy for you here. Firstly, it can insta down you if you get on it wrong. So just be really careful when you're trying to hop aboard. It does slow down sometimes. So those are probably going to be better opportunities for you to get on board. And second, enemy AI can shoot through the train walls. So if you're on it and you start taking damage and you don't understand how you're being shot, just make sure that you're taking cover behind things like the wooden boxes instead of the train carriages themselves. Number 14, it feels like everyone in DMZ has a self revive at all times. Like you can't trust anyone to just die when you kill them. So I think it's a really important tip to always thirst enemies and fully wipe them if you can when you're in a gunfight. Now, don't get me wrong, this doesn't take precedence over just surviving yourself. Like if you need to let them get up so that you can survive, then by all means, run away, let them stand up and get back into the fight another day. But if kind of nothing's happening and you have a second, it's quite important, I'd say, to actually take that moment to just wipe them out compared to what you might do in another mode like a war zone, where focusing on the other players that are up is really your priority. So more often than not, you're able to just sort of leave people crawling around and it's not the end of the world. In this, it really could be. So be careful. Number 15, on the topic of self-revives, you can find these things more frequently in med cabinets compared to other loot locations. So if it's specifically a self-res that you're searching for, you can still look in lockers and backpacks and things like that, but make sure you're prioritizing busting down the door to all those bathrooms and looking in the med cabinets. Number 16, I'm sure you already know that you can take any vehicle to a fuel station, kill any enemies that are in the nearby area, sit there for a second, and it will refill it with gas and it will repair the vehicle. So if you've got any damage, that will go away. But a very quick tip is that you don't need to be sitting in the vehicle in order for it to be repaired. Like it's not you that's repairing it, it's the gas station. So you can park the vehicle up as long as you hear that ding ding and see that it's repairing or in the ready to be repaired state. And then you can run around, clear any enemies in the area, loot a little bit, and when you come back, it will be fully recharged and it will have all its gas ready for you to go and keep zooming around the map like a madman. Number 17, another gas station tip. If you're doing a mission that requires you to use grenades for some reason, the gas stations in the game are your best friend. Nearly every gas station is going to contain two decoys, two tear gases, two smokes, two stuns, two flashes, etc. So in terms of looking for specific loot in specific areas, this is a really good one to keep in the back of your mind. Number 18, in those gas stations that you're looting those grenades from, you can also find gas cans, which at face value don't look that useful. But if you pick them up and get back into your vehicle, you'll be able to refuel your vehicle on the road. You don't have to be at a gas station. You don't have to be near one. You don't have to fill the gas can up. It comes pre-filled and it's an instant activation. You use it from inside the vehicle and instantly you'll have all your gas back. This makes it especially useful if you're planning to, for example, loot an area or hang out in an area 
until the very end of the match and you don't know exactly which gas stations you might or might not be able to access on your route to the final chopper. Instead, you can just bring your own gas and then do things your own way and you don't have to rely on taking a detour just to fill back up. Number 19. In pretty much every game you play, the train will spawn here. So if you spawn in this particular spawn location, you can jump in a vehicle and use it to catch the train before any other player in the lobby and then you know that you're guaranteed to get access to all of that loot first. Number 20. As you know, when you're exfilling, you can hop into the chopper via the side doors or via the ramp at the back. But what a lot of people don't know is you can also exfil on the kind of love handles of the chopper. Like the two bits that stick out on the side of it, you can climb onto and it will still count for your team's little five second timer to start the exfil and you won't fall off. You can just stay sat on there while it flies up into the air and then you'll keep all your stuff when the chopper leaves. So it's a totally viable spot. And it also means that if an enemy team is inside the chopper, you can sneak on on the outside and they might not even know that you're there. It's obviously risky, but it's better than having to fight 3v1 or something to get into the chopper and leave. Number 21. If you're in an awkward scenario where you do have an enemy team 3v1 against you and they're already in the chopper ready to exfil, you could absolutely try your luck at just joining their squad. If you hold your ping key down, it's going to open a little context menu and you're going to be able to request to join nearby squads. And once you're in the squad, you're safe. So they can't like invite you in and then sneakily kick you out or something. And this means that if you're really in a super tight situation, you might be able to rely on the charitable side of some of the other people in your game. Number 22, the same works in reverse. You can invite nearby people to your squad and it's via the same mechanism, that context menu on the ping wheel on your D-pad. But I wanted to give you a little bit more info about how it works. You can have up to six people in a squad at a time and different people can expel at different times. You can have some people roaming across the map and doing missions while others are doing contracts and others are hunting players. And that's all going to mean that you get shared XP. So if you're able to group up with another team and all split up in that kind of way and farm the map, then it's worth making the most of it until the very end of the game because you're going to get so much experience. Number 23, you can repair and refuel land vehicles at sea refuel stations and vice versa. Essentially, if it's a vehicle of some kind and there's a refuel station of some kind, it'll fill it up for you. So don't be hesitant. You can just land your chopper at one of the boat refill stations to get some extra gas. Number 24, if you get in this particular car, it can basically climb mountains. The reason for this is its combination of massive acceleration and having a really high top speed compared to other vehicles. And so if you want, as you can see here, you can literally just straight line it up mountains and it's going to do a remarkably good job. And it's super quiet, so you'll be able to sneak up on people a bit more easily. Number 25, you can actually cancel contracts that you've accepted if you no longer want to do them and you can't be bothered to let the timer run out or to just leave it till the end of the game. To do this, pull up your map and then as you can see here, they'll be a hint suggesting which key it is for you if you're on PC or console, and that's how you cancel the contract. Number 26, a really good loot location when you spawn in is this one here inside the kind of museum. It's got orange crates in it right in front of you, and if you go all the way to the top of the tower, you'll also find loot up there as well. It's super easy to get to, so if you do spawn here, don't just run in another direction straight away. Take a second to get all the good loot. Number 27, if you're trying to get as much money as possible, the radiation contract is amazing. Once you activate it, it will tell you to go loot a certain area and inside you'll find a Geiger counter. And you need to then use that to loot two separate hidden caches hidden in areas that the map will indicate to you. In those caches, there's going to be a bunch of money and then also valuable items like fuel rods. And remember, there's two caches. So you're going to end up getting like thirty to $50,000 out of this contract. Number 28, if you're trying to do one of the missions where you extract with like a hundred grand or even two 200 grand, you're going to want to exfil with one of the Geiger counters that we got from the previous tip and then spawn in with it in your next game. This is because if you've already got the Geiger counter, you'll be able to skip the step of running over to it and picking it up. And so it'll save you like 60 to 90 seconds of your match that you could instead be spending earning money or just picking up those fuel rods. So this is a time saver that also means that you earn more cash more quickly. Number 29, if you're doing a hostage exfil, normally when you pick the hostage up, up, you just end up with a fist out, like you don't have a weapon equipped, so it makes you a lot more vulnerable. However, if you have a pistol as one of your weapons or some similar sidearm, you will be able to hold that out. So if you know 100% you're going to do a hostage mission, it might be a good idea to bring a deagle along or something so that you're not a complete 
sitting duck while you complete it. Number 30. This isn't the last tip in the video. I'm going to give you some bonus ones. So don't click off just yet. The tip though for number 30 is that different things are available at different buy stations. So if you go to one and you find one kill streak, you'll find a different kill streak at another buy station around the map. And this honestly kind of turns into like tip 31, 2, 3, and 4. You can buy stronghold key cards at buy stations. And that's going to mean that you don't have to kill enemies to get those blue key cards. And you can also buy keys to specific areas there, which is so useful because certain big areas around the map, like for example, the US Embassy can be really good to loot. And some of them are even needed for DMZ specific quests. So if you're looking for a certain key, like the downtown post office key, go around the map going through the buy stations and you'll be able to find it at one of them. And buy stations can also be used to sell enemy dog tags. And I think that they're going to add functionality to this in the future. But right now you can sell them for 2,500 bucks and it will mean that you're no longer tracked by the enemy team once you get them out of your inventory and you obviously book the cash that you'd otherwise be booking at the very end of the game. Tip 30, what, four or something? Is if you need to exfil with certain items, like let's say tear gas grenades, for example, you can do this really easily by spawning in with tear gas grenades and a munitions box, then stowing the tear gas grenades or dropping them on the floor, and then using the munitions box to just get yourself two fresh tear gas grenades. Then if your teammate has a munitions box, you can do the exact same thing. It's gonna remember the fact that you spawned in with the tear gas, and that was the last thing that was in your kind of equipped slot. And so that's what it's gonna give you when you try and refill your ammo. So with a full squad, you can get like 10 of a certain type of grenade just by doing this trick the second you spawn in. Tip 35, if you want to farm as many AI kills as possible, maybe you're trying to grind up some weapon XP or maybe you're just a psychopath, then I highly recommend waiting until the final exfil chopper. Once the radiation is spreading and that chopper is coming in, all the AI on the map are going to start running towards that exfil chopper because they don't want to be in the radiation either. So you can kill them on their way there and once you get there, you you can just see them running right into you and you can take them down one by one. If these have been useful so far, consider subscribing. And on screen, I've linked even more DMZ tips for you to become a true expert of the mode.